Oh, well, when you think about some of the things that's happened years and years ago with um, machinery and and uh, strange circumstances and all that sort of thing. I can distinctly remember at one stage that Dawn and I were right up in the top of the hill there at the back of town. We were actually planting potatoes with a, using a little grey Ferguson tractor with a plough on the back of it. And you'd plough a couple of rows and with a couple of furrows with the plough and then you'd go along by hand and put the seed potatoes in. Then you'd go back and you'd run another couple of furrows with the plough and cover that lot up and make another furrow to plant again. And we were doing this all the afternoon and it come time to go home and milk the cows. And Dawn at that stage used to ride a horse quite a bit and, and we had the horse, or she'd ridden the horse up there for the purpose of bringing the cows in later on. And we'd unsaddled the horse for a fairly warm sort of a day and you don't want to poor animal stand there with the saddle on all day. So I jumped off the tractor and headed down to uh, put the saddle on the horse for her so she could get the cows in. And I obviously got off the, got off the tractor too quick and I didn't put the brake on properly, did I? So heard a bit of a rattle and looked up in the hill a bit and here's this tractor plough and all coming flying down the hill. And there was a fairly brand new fence that had only been there a year or two and fairly large posts in it. I'd have only run into one of the posts and, and it would stop. But it didn't actually stop. It hit the post and snapped it off a ground level and kept going. But the impact of the tractor hitting the post knocked the radiator off the tractor. So it veered down the hill. It, Goodness only knows what sort of speed, because it was only touching the ground in places. And there was a gateway down the bottom of the hill, in that, into the next door paddock, and luckily the, the um, gate was open, and there was two huge big strainer posts there, like nearly 18 inches thick each. And for some unknown reason, better known to the tractor, it headed straight for the gateway and went straight through without hitting any of the posts. It went creared up the other side of the gully until it sort of lost momentum and, and then it turned round and came flying back down the hill on the other side of the gully, hit a huge big hole and the impact of it hitting the hole through the plough off the back of the tractor careered up the other side of the hill, down the other side and kept backwards and forwards until it went down the, near where the gully flattened out, which is probably about three quarters of a kilometre. And uh, we just stood there with our mouths open watching it, as you can imagine. Um, yeah, well, Dawn was heading down to get the cows and I said, oh, get down round past the tractor and have a look to see what was what was, how much was broken and so forth. And she went down and, and damn me if the tractor wasn't sitting there still idling away, quite happy, without a radiator and the fan was sitting out the front like a, with a um, propeller on an aeroplane. So it just as well she went down to turn the tractor off, otherwise without a radiator and without any water, naturally it would have seized. And, and as it was, we, Turn, Dawn turned the tractor off and, and of course we just left it there until the next day because we had to go and milk the cows and next day we come up and, and um, organised it, got the tractor back together and, and went and put the radio, picked the radiator up and took it down and a few new hoses and, and yeah, a very interesting experience, one that I wouldn't like to go through again but... <laughs> Luckily I was not.